part of what taught me so much at photography school. Um, friends of mine, we would choose different areas of photography and develop secret knowledge of that area. And then we'd, when we'd built it up, we'd share it. And the, the standard of the group you know, just went up and we'd do it again. And that's the way we taught ourselves photography because we needed to do that. There was a fair bit of freedom. I think the right amount for people to follow their own direction and that's why you got strong individuation amongst students. The technical training was, I argue, less than it should have been. But then I am very thankful to Derek Lee who took it upon himself to make sure that we worked through much of Michael Langford's textbook. And that was the primary technical training that we had. And I still draw on that today and I'm very thankful that in a time of laissez-faire, someone had the insight or the willingness to say, no, we need a bit of structure here, and he gave it to us. We would make discoveries that are often cultural, like the Germans produced lenses that were about volume. They recorded volume beautifully, and they didn't have so much emphasis on the lineal edge quality that, say, Nikon did. If you look into those cultures, you look into their painting and printmaking, you can see those concerns hundreds of years before they were making lenses. We would choose film and lens combinations to do, do with that. Photography tends to increase or, or exaggerate the third dimension and I was interested in flattening it, which is a painterly idea of you know, respecting the canvas, um, the flatness of the print. I didn't want to take that to an exaggerated degree but it informed what I did. I paint now more than I photograph simply because all my equipment got burnt and all my negatives got burnt in a house fire. I said, what can I do? I can go back to painting. <laughs> it's cheap. <laughs> I can do it with little resources and I can use my knowledge. And so now I make digital paintings which combine oil painting and photography. And it's just one, one stream of what I do. I've always felt that politics didn't have a place in art. I, I don't feel that way now. To politicise art was to make it more superficial, even if it was about profound things. I didn't want to steep my photography in a particular time. I was after more universal. Now, politics is a very quickly changing thing. What is true now in a day or two is not. So I didn't want that in my, my art. I think there are times in history where your photography better be political. I mean, your art better be political because you can't lie down and let all that shit happen. <laughs>